Okay, so today I kind of want to talk about like um, being chronically ill and also vision impaired and like what that means for me in my life. Um, just like while I get ready for the day. Um, I also am mentally ill, yeehaw. <laughs> um, and one of my diagnoses is PTSD. Actually, it's CPTSD, but, um, yeah, I just had some really bad nightmares last night, um, like, and they don't necessarily have to be, something that's misconceived about PTSD is, like, yeah, there's flashbacks and stuff, but it's not just that, like, it's, like, a lot, like, just, like, in your dreams, like, it doesn't have to be a flashback of an event that happened, it just is, like, a feeling of being in the moment and the fear that it produces and it's not always fear either it's just like very strong emotions but it really sucks um a lot and so I always wake up crying whenever that happens and that happened today um so that really sucked <laughs> um <laughs> I just had dreams. I always have these like reoccurring dreams and they're really odd. Like sometimes it'll just pick right back up, which like I never used to have before. And sometimes it'll just be a totally different one. Like, um, I just had dreams that my husband was leaving me last night and like, it, obviously like I love my husband, so I don't want that to happen. And like, I just, had like this like just fear I, whenever I woke up and like whenever I woke up like I know like my husband's at work like I had a message from him like he loves me like all this stuff like I know this but like my PTSD and my anxiety and depression do not know that and um I also have PPD which is um postpartum depression and uh, honestly, they say that it's supposed to go away after, like, a year and a half, which Evelyn will be uh, a year and a half in January, but I don't know. Like, a lot of people I spoke to says that, like, their stuff has never gone away, and I think that's probably going to be, like, how I am, and I think I have PPA, which is postpartum anxiety, more than anything, but, yeah, so that just really sucks. Um... And, like, I'll just have, like, the most irrational fears sometimes. And, thank God, like, I do have, like, the angry thing. But, like, mine is not, like, violent. I'm just, like, pissed. Like, I'm just, like, mad. And I don't know why that is. And I really hate it. And I've taken all kinds of medicine for it. Um... And literally nothing has helped. I've taken um, Lexpro, I've taken uh, Ativan, I've taken Visceral and Visterel, I've taken Buzapar and Buzapron. They're all the same things, but they like, swear that they're not. Um, Lexpro, Wellbutrin, Zoloft. I don't know. I've taken a lot of stuff and nothing has ever really helped me. It just makes it worse. Like, instead of sad, I'll be mad. Instead of mad, like, I'll just, like, want to stay in bed all day. And, like, I won't even be sad. I'll just, like, be, like, I don't know. So, yeah, that really sucks. Um, and that's where cannabis comes in for me. So, I'm smoking right now and getting ready. And then I'm going to go to the bathroom and do my brush and my teeth stuff and all that goodness yeah I think just I'll probably wash my face because I wore makeup yesterday and I washed my face last night but I think there's still like some it just feels like there's still crap on my face you know so yeah but that was really cool canvas is the only thing that's helped me excuse me this far um also like I do what's called microdosing and so I'll just like take one dab for like oh shit things are fine okay these are really liquidy too which I love them they're called sap but this is my well they're not new well they are. anyways these are my new ones or lava cake by buoyant bomb 
Um, I was kind of scared because the price was like pretty low, but they're pretty good. Well, pretty low for our dispensaries. Okay. So, yeah, I just like do a little dab for the day and then I'm good. I smacked like um, a couple hits off my bowl on my bum, but so yeah, anyways. This is my Canna journey as a Canna mom. As a medical patient, I am a medical patient. I just want to make that clear. Like, I do hold a medical card. And I do use this specifically for medical purposes only. Um, I do truly suffer with horrific anxiety and chronic pain from my chronic illnesses, which um, I've had in stage renal disease for 26 years. No, that's why. I'll be 26 this coming year. <laughs> I'm only 25. God. I just don't know anything sometimes, and that's okay. But, yeah, so, in stage renal disease, I've had two kidney transplants. My, I currently have a kidney transplant right now, and it is currently failing, unfortunately. Um, well, they're not quite sure. They think it's failing. But they want to give it like another six months because they don't know if it's from me having a baby or what. But it's not really improved. So, uh, judging from the, like, I'm somebody that, like, is a really honest person. And, like, I just, judging from the numbers, like, numbers just don't lie, you know? So. But, <clears throat> yeah, so I just, like, I know that about myself, and, like, if I face the head on, and I'm like, hey, shit's not going right, like, at least I mentally will prepare myself. <sighs> that was a bigger one than I intended to take, but... Are we gonna start our day off right? Because we had a rough ass night. That's okay. Um, and then, so that's that. Um, basically, that just means that I'm going through a lot of pain. My kidney hurts. Um, my uterus still really hurts, but my gyno doesn't think that there's like anything wrong with that, even though it's been like a year and four months since I had a baby. But it's fine. They just keep saying that it's like probably from removing my tubes. <coughs> because like some of you who will be watching this will know, but some of you won't. Um, I had an emergency medical abortion in 2019 at 24 weeks gestational age because um, she just wasn't growing right. And my kidney was failing. Sorry, this is still really hard for me. Um, it's been almost four years, but it's still really hard, especially knowing that, like, Evelyn is so good with her baby dolls and other kids. And, like, when she sees other kids, she just wants to play with them. And, like, I know she would love having a sister. So, it's just a lot, but... That's why we need to advocate for medical abortion access and just abortion access in general because, like, nobody ever wants to get an abortion. It's usually everybody's last resort, but, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, of that, so yeah, ever since I had Annalise, um, my kidney's been failing. It went into, like, non-failure. And then I got pregnant with Evelyn, and then it started tanking again. So, um, I 
basically both times I almost died and both one of my babies did die and Evelyn was born very early at 27 and a half weeks so we were very worried that she was not gonna make it but <laughs> my husband and I were looking at pictures of her yesterday because yesterday was a year since we brought her home and she's so big and she's so smart and perfect and sweet <laughs> and she's so funny oh my god she's such a little ham <laughs> And her favorite thing to say is tickle tickle, which is just so sweet. And so, like, my other journey I'm on right now is, like, balancing all of my mental illness, my physical sickness. Like, I have hypoglycemia sometimes. I have hypertension. Um, they think I might have thyroid problems like my daughter has. Um, which could explain why I have a hard time losing weight and sometimes my weight fluctuates really bad. Like right now I'm in kidney failure, so I've lost like 55 pounds recently. And while that's not great <laughs> that I'm in kidney failure or that I'm losing weight that rapidly, like it is good that I'm losing the weight because with both my pregnancies, I got a, um, my first pregnancy, I got up to over 310 pounds which um, obviously is not good. I went from being like relatively smallish, like I was probably like 200 and I got all the way up to 310 pounds. And that was basically because of my doctors and the neglect, but it's neither here nor there. Um, with my second pregnancy, like I only gained eight pounds until like the last week. And I gained like 40 pounds in one week because of all the water retention. And honestly, I do drink a ton of water because I have to because of my kidney transplant. But like my kidney just started shutting down because um, I started getting preeclampsia again because my sweet loving dogs decided to um, get loose and run across the road. And, of course, they got loose by pulling their stake out of the ground because they had, like, huge tie-outs on a stake. My fault. But, yeah, and then they wrapped themselves around the tree, and my dog, Bitsy, which we call her Corn or Elote, affectionately, um, like, I had the stake. Like, oh, my God, it was just terrifying. I don't want to talk about it anymore because, like, it will probably raise my blood pressure again, but yeah it was a horrific so I like started freaking the fuck out and my husband was at work and honestly he may have even been at like some kind of training because there was some reason he couldn't come home like right away and normally like he could just come home because he like worked in the county that we live in and well he used to and so yeah it was just like a whole thing and so basically I just can't have babies and that's okay and I've accepted that and like adoption is possible in the future but right now we are working on like building ourselves and living our happy life with our Evelyn <laughs> and I'm so excited to go wake her up because she's still not awake which is so unusual normally she's up by like 8 30 or 9 and it's almost like 9 30 here but sometimes she just gets sleeping so good so I love that for her but um yeah so stuff is wild and I gotta do some laundry today and so oh god being vision impaired okay so being vision impaired is wild I won't lie like um I'm sure you'll probably notice in my videos but like this eye is just completely gone. It's basically, I don't want to use the term lazy eye because I don't think that's like, um, good anymore, but it, that's basically what it is. Like, okay, so my, um, I'm about to throw a bunch of stuff at you. My, uh, ocular nerve is detached and you can kind of see right here like moves around 
Okay, that's detached, so like nothing's really holding my eye. And also my uh, like rods and cones are completely gone out of the way, out of the side. So my ability to perceive light is like mm, gone, gone. There's nothing there. Like there's nothing except um, there is a the really old TVs used to have like this rainbow static sometimes. And it always, like, as a kid, it always, like, reminded me of, like, how acid trips were described to us, like, in D.A.R.E. programs and shit. So, that's what it's like. I still have that filter. And I always have that, like, it's like a filter all over my vision constantly. And it's, like, rainbow static. And it's it's really hard to see with, I won't lie. Um, I can't perceive lines, really. So, like, anytime there's, like, a step up or stairs or something, my husband or whoever I'm with has to be, like, up, down, like, they'll tell me, and then, like, um, I always, like, I have stairs in my house, I know exactly how many stairs there are, and what I do is I put my foot as far forward on the stairs as I can to, and then step, and then feel with the other foot to, like, make sure that there's another step. Or, and like I do the same thing back, like I put my foot as far back on the stair whenever I'm going down. And I found that that really helps and also like memorizing how many stairs are in a place. And something that also has really helped me is um, like a lot of the places I go are places that we went to before I was visually impaired. So like I pretty much your brain like has the capability of doing that like you can memorize like layouts of places so like i basically have blueprints in my head of like everywhere i go so like i know where things are and like my best friend's mom and her were talking about and my best friend were talking about it the other day i guess she was telling me and like her mom was like well how does she know how to get around she gets around here great and like, kaylee was like mom we haven't moved anything in like 10 years <laughs> Which, like, really just sent me, like, that was hilarious, but so true. And I thought it was so cute. So, um, yeah, like, that's basically it. Like, I just, like, I memorize things and stuff. And, like, as for my makeup, like, I've memorized my face. And I used to do makeup before I was vision impaired. So, like, I know... I know where my contour goes, I know where my highlight goes, like I could do this with my eyes closed, like this eye only has 15, or I think they said like, yeah, 15 to 25% left, they're not super for sure because basically I had like a laser scan of my, all, both of my eyes done to where they could see every single part of my eye. That's how they knew that there were no rods and cones existing and like my maculas degenerating and stuff from having such high blood pressure. Um, they think I had a stroke during labor and based on like my, um, the one side of my face kind of droops and stuff and I kind of, okay, I don't know where that left off at, but um cool <laughs> um i was just saying like whenever i go places when i'm blind i memorize where the steps are um i go to places that i mostly have been before um and i don't really don't like to say that i'm blind because i have like 15 to 20 percent of my vision 15 to 25 percent I don't know. It's like enough to get around, but it's not enough. Like I can't see computers at all and my phone I have to have really special settings on and every time I go anywhere they want where they want me to like sign something or something, I like have to get really close or like open my eyes really wide. And so I'm sure like people are like, Is this girl okay? But I'm fine. I'm just very visually impaired. Um yeah. <laughs> So I don't get to work and I wish I did. Like, I'm so glad I get to stay at home with Evelyn. Like, that is wonderful and beautiful and I love it and um, great. But I'm really sad that I just, like, mommy and me dates will not be a thing for us. We won't be able to go anywhere together. So that really, like, gets me. And, um, yeah, that's something that just really sucks. But... 
Like I love her so much and I'm so glad that I just get to be her mom. And I, in the beginning I did apply for a bunch of jobs, but once you, like you legally have to tell people that you're visually impaired and you're blind and stuff. And like once people hear that, they're like, mm, no. And they say it's not because of that, but like, they're fine with it because I've had a great job history. Like I won't lie, like I'm a good ass worker. I used to get like employee of the month every month at this one job I worked at. Um, so yeah, and I used to work in healthcare and I absolutely adored it, but that's just won't be a thing anymore. And it's something that like, I've had a really hard time accepting because I used to put all my identity into work. So I guess all in all, you'll just be seeing um, my healing journey. I recommend the Finch app. I just use the free version, but every now and again I sign up for like their seven day free trial of their premium and it's worth it, I would say. So I think I'm going to ask for that for Christmas, but yeah, I'm just really excited to start being okay again. And I'm okay, I'm just like, I know how to cope with things now and I know like it's not me it's my anxiety so I'm okay we're gonna I'm gonna journal about it and then I'll laugh about it and I'll be okay and you will too love y'all bye